So the question is, should you go with the Canon 35 millimeter lens or the 50 millimeter lens? And is that extra 15 millimeters really worth it? I'll be answering that question in today's video. Let's jump in. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jonathan Moore and I have a video production company where I help businesses and entrepreneurs grow online using photo and video. So let's just jump right into it. I got my Starbucks, so I'm ready to rock and roll. And like I said, today I'm gonna to be comparing the Canon 35 millimeter versus the Canon 50 millimeter. Now these are the EF lenses. So the Canon 35 millimeter has an aperture of 2.0 and the Canon 50 millimeter has an aperture of 1.8. So I'm gonna be talking about a few pros and cons and which one you might wanna choose when you're looking at both of these lenses. Okay, so to get started, if you're looking at the 35 or the 50 millimeter lens, you might be in the process of buying your first prime lens so if you're not familiar with that definition a prime lens is basically a lens that's at a fixed focal length which means that you can't zoom in and zoom out how you normally can with what are known as zoom lenses or kit lenses that you receive on the camera all right guys so keep in mind that some of the images that i'll be showing you throughout today have been shot on my canon 5d which is a full frame sensor so if you're shooting with the sl2 or the rebel it's all basically the same it's just that being this is a full frame sensor and those aren't their crop frame sensor it's just a little bit tighter all right guys so let's just jump right into it and talk about which one we should go with we have the 35 which is up first which is a nice wide angle lens relatively speaking. Also, this is a great macro lens. Now, this lens actually I use a lot, and it's really great when I said for macro, like if you're doing close-up, close-up work, you like to get really tight on your subjects, this lens is gonna be really good for that. Also, the aperture opens up to uh, 2.0, so you know it's gonna be good in low light situations. And also, being that you can open up the aperture to 2.0, you can really get that nice, nice bokeh. So if you're in the market for a prime lens, you're probably trying to get that nice, soft, blurry background look, which is that bokeh. Gotta want that bokeh, gotta love that bokeh. Okay, but here's the only downfall with this. So actually, I was just looking on the internet not too long ago just to see what the price of this particular lens was. Now, when I purchased it, I don't remember. I actually purchased this lens a couple years ago and I don't think it was super expensive, but when I was looking online, the cheapest that I found it was at 250. And just, you know, so you know, that's, I mean, that's not a lot, but it can be a lot as we compare it to the 50 millimeter. So let me go into that. Okay, so you have the 50 millimeter, right? So you might hear this commonly referred to as the nifty 50, right? This is one of those great lenses. I, I actually, I love this 50 millimeter lens. And this was actually a first prime lens that I got for my camera. I bought the 50 millimeter first and then I actually bought the 35. So one of the uh, great things about this is that it can open up to 1.8, which, you know, obviously is great that you can open that aperture so low. It's great for low light situations. And obviously the more you can open up the aperture, right, the nice and softer of that background you can get. I did purchase this lens a while ago, but when I was looking online on Amazon, I actually seen this come in at 115 US, okay? And it's actually 115 for a 50 millimeter STM lens. So $115 US for a STM lens is pretty good. That's actually a bonus for my video creators out there. You know what I'm talking about. So a STM lens means silent technology motor, which means that as the lens is focusing on the subject, it's gonna be very quiet. So you know that you need that if you're using a shotgun mic or you're using an on-camera mic, you wanna have that silent motor so you don't hear the lens focusing, right, while you're talking on camera. So let's talk about the pros. The pros is that, A, they both open up to, you got 2.0 and you got 1.8, so they both work well in low light situations. And as a result, being able to open up that aperture so wide, they both have beautiful bokeh. So let's start with some of the pros and some of the cons of the 50 millimeter, okay? Pros, like I said before, low aperture, beautiful bokeh. The cons can be, depending on 
the job, right? It's very job sensitive. So if you're shooting something like street photography, it's not a big deal. But if you're gonna try to take this to, let's say an indoor situation, you're doing a party, you're doing an event, it's maybe at somebody's house or it's inside of a room, this can be very tough to work with because it's not wide. And if you're shooting on, it's not a wide angle is what I mean. And if you're shooting on say something like a SL2 or the Rebel series, it's even tighter of a crop. So this isn't gonna work well in, you know, event, uh, in situations like that where you need to shoot like large wide groups of people um, and if you're in tight situations but if you're outside street photography maybe you're doing some outdoor portraits this is actually a great lens i really do love this lens okay so let's talk about the 35 let's talk well we already know the pros low aperture right so you can get that nice beautiful bokeh and it works great in low light situations also, being that it's a 35 millimeter uh, lens, it's a little bit wider of an angle, and this is actually really great for macro shots. So if you're shooting up close, it's awesome. Now, I actually shoot a lot of food. I have a restaurant client, and I shoot a lot of food for them, and I use this lens all the time. Like, this is my go-to lens because I can get nice wide shots, but I can also get really close and get nice details as well. Now, same thing about this lens, it really is job sensitive. It depends on what you're working on, right? If you're working on something that's very close up, this is a beautiful lens, okay? If you're shooting outdoors, you know, street photography, this is also a great lens for that too. Now, if you're in a tighter situation, it's not the ideal lens. Yes, it is better, okay, than the 50 millimeter because it would be a little bit wider. But if you're doing something like an event, you're trying to get wide shots, you know, um, just those kind of generic group shots, this can kind of be very tough to work with because you're gonna make, you need space, right? Having a zoom lens in a situation like that keeps you nice and flexible because you can zoom in, zoom out, open it up. They usually open up wider than these prime lenses right here. Okay, so real quick, I wanna mention, the only thing about the 35 millimeter lens, and it's a little bit of a quirk, but I figured it's important to mention, like I said, it's job specific. It's because when this lens focus, or when it's you know focusing, it's actually super loud, and it can be kind of annoying. Now, if you're outside, you're outdoors, it doesn't really matter, but like if you're working on, say something inside, maybe you're shooting like a stage scene or something where you gotta be quiet, it's like, it's just, it's got this like, I mean, I'm sure you can hear that. It, it's just loud, it's just squeaky. I mean, when it's focusing now, in all honesty, it really doesn't bother me because I don't know, it just doesn't bother me, but I can see that being something that could bother somebody. And if you're gonna try to use this when you're shooting video and you're letting it autofocus, that is just a bad idea. Well, if the camera, if the sound is off camera, you're fine. But if it's on camera, shotgun mic, you know, in built-in camera uh, microphone, yeah, you don't wanna use that. So now the real question comes down to which one should you choose? Should you go with the 50 millimeter? Should you go with the 35 millimeter? Um, and right now, like I'm gonna say, you know, it really does depend on what you're looking to do and what you're looking to shoot. Now, if you just wanna get a prime lens so you can get that nice bokeh look in the background, hands down, you have to go with the 50 millimeter lens. If it's not something that you know, you need specifically, you just wanna do some nice portraits, maybe you do, you know, street photography, whatever the case may be, but you wanna get that nice, soft, you know, blurry uh, background in those portraits, this is a great lens, especially for the price of $115 US, and you can get it as a STM lens, which is definitely a bonus, because if you're doing video, you can always just throw that bad boy on your video, and if it's auto-focusing, and that's the wiser because they won't hear it. It's silent motor. On the flip side, we have the 35 millimeter, which is actually a little bit wider. So that's a pro. You get that nice wide look. Actually, I really love this lens. I use it all of the time, as you can see in some of these images here. A lot of them were shot with the 35 millimeter. Um, the negative is, is though, it's coming in at a price of $260 US, which like I said, that's not gonna break the bank. But if you're just looking to get a prime lens because you wanna give your photos a little bit of a different look and you don't need, you know, specific prime lens, you know, a, a specific focal length, then you might as well go with the 50. But if you go with the 35, 
you absolutely can't go wrong as well. It's nice, it's wide, you know, it gives you a little bit more flexibility than the 50 does in all honesty, and that's why I shoot with it all of the time. I still use my 50 every once in a while, but for the most part, I throw that 35 on there and I rip and roll. But like I said, if it's your first prime lens that you're getting and you just wanna test it out and see how it looks, I would definitely go with the 50 millimeter STM lens hands down because if you ever get you a camera where you can shoot video as well that STM lens is going to come in huge so that's it for me today guys that is my take on the Canon 50 millimeter lens versus the Canon 35 millimeter lens if you like this video or if you found it useful please hit that like button also subscribe to the channel so you can check out some new content that I'll be dropping for you guys I'm always gonna have gear reviews and I am a Canon head, so if you ain't messing with Canon, you ain't messing with me, I guess. Also guys on my channel, you can expect to find some other things like book reviews, and I have a new ride along series that I'm actually doing. It's just kind of me riding in the car, it's just my thoughts, but those are for, you know, that's for my small business owners, my entrepreneurs out there who are trying to get it how they live, and it's just, you know, thoughts and feelings and emotions that I'm going through. So like I said, guys, if you like this video, please give me a like, leave me a comment. Let me know some of the uh, lenses that you guys are using and how you're using them. And, uh, you know, share this with a friend. And uh, until next time, people, peace. I'm out.